Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this video I'd like to share with you a pen and ink lesson that is taken directly from the course Subjects with Pen and Ink. Now in the course Subjects with Pen and Ink, we cover a broad variety of different subjects using a broad variety of different application techniques using pen and ink. We use technical drawing pens, nib pens, ink wash, and much, much more. Now this course is only for members at TheVirtualInstructor.com, so if you want to learn more about how you can access this course, I'll leave a link in the description below. Below. Now with that being said, let's take a look at how to draw a crab using technical drawing pens on smooth Bristol paper. I hope you enjoy. In this lesson we'll use technical drawing pens and we'll use cross hatching to draw a crab. We'll get started here on smooth Bristol paper working with an H graphite pencil. And here again, I'm gonna hold the pencil lower down on the shaft so I can create some looser light lines here. We're gonna concentrate on drawing the basic shapes that we see here. So we wanna break the subject down into simplified shapes. We're gonna start with the main portion of the body of the crab and then work our way outward from there. So you can see I'm drawing with lots of different lines. I am drawing very, very loosely as I mentioned before and lightly as well. We're drawing here part of the, the crab's claw, the larger claw that comes towards the viewer. So because this particular section is coming towards the viewer, we have a little bit of foreshortening there. So we're gonna concentrate mainly on the larger shape of the claw and then add those smaller shapes that go backwards towards the body. We can also make a little bit of a refinement to our original sketch for the body and start to plan out some of those intricate segments that happen on the body as well. Then we can move our way over to the left side and draw all of those legs here. And of course, each one of these legs is made up of smaller segments. So we're basically concentrating on the smaller segments as we're sketching out these legs. Now it's important to pay attention to the negative spaces between each one of these legs to ensure that we are placing these legs in approximately the correct location. If they're off just a little bit, it's not a big deal. Of course, the final drawing is what ultimately matters here. Then, of course, we'll move our way to the right side of the body here and continue that process of drawing each of the legs, and in this case, one of those claws. Now, of course, this is the smaller of the two claws, and in here again, this one comes towards the viewer at an interesting angle here. So we need to pay close attention to the shapes of the claws themselves and how much space we leave in between each one of the claws when we're sketching these out. Then we'll continue the process of drawing each one of these segmented legs. Again, when we concentrate on each one of the segments instead of the overall leg itself, it makes this drawing process a little bit easier. And then after we've got the majority of the legs in place, we've just got one more leg to, to lay down here on the drawing surface. Again, using looser marks and drawing the leg each segment at a time. Then of course we have these distinctive eyes that extend out from the body. So we'll draw a couple of ovals for those and a couple of lines to indicate where they connect to the upper portion of the body. Now, of course, we can begin refining the contour lines. We'll refine the contour lines to a certain degree, placing a little bit more pressure on the pencil. We're gonna still keep some of those sketchy lines in place, of course. And then once our graphite sketch is in place, we can begin with the pen and ink applications. For this drawing, we're gonna use two different sizes of the technical drawing pens. We're working with Steedler pigment liner pens here for this drawing. We're gonna start here with the 0.1 millimeter pen this will be the larger of the two pins that we use, and we're just going to concentrate on outlining the contour lines. Here again, we'll use broken lines where appropriate. Wherever we see strong areas of highlight, we'll use a broken line, and wherever we see areas where the value is rather dark or in areas of shadow, we're going to use a solid line. Here on the claw, we can see we have a bumpy edge here, so we'll pay close attention to the reference and try to mimic that contour line as closely as possible. And then we'll move our way down to each one of the segments. Again, outlining the contours, but you'll also notice that we're bringing in a few lines on the inside portion of each one of the legs here just to define each one of these little segments that we have. Now working our way back to the right side of the body, we'll go ahead and outline the bottom portion and go into all of these different shapes that we see on the middle portion of the body and the lower portion of the body. There's lots of little 
portions, little segments here to this particular section. So we'll work slowly and deliberately and take our time making sure that we're outlining all of the different segments. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be completely accurate or completely perfect with the photo reference. You can deviate slightly, but for the most part, we want to be as accurate as possible. Then, of course, we'll continue with the outlining process, concentrating on the contour lines for all of the legs and the claw on the right side of the body. Of course, when we're going through this outlining process, we're paying close attention to any of the overlapping elements. And there's quite a number of overlapping elements here. So it's not a bad idea to double check before you draw that line. Now that we've got all of our contour lines in place, we'll go ahead and start developing the value and the texture. We're going to start in the eyes here, and we're going to switch over now to a 0 0.05 millimeter pin. So this is a rather small pin here, and we're going to do the rest of the work here using this pin. We're going to use uh, cross hatching for this drawing, of course, and we're going to start by making the values nice and dark in this first eye. Of course, leaving an open area where we see a highlight. You'll also notice that we're using a few bits of some dots here and there. Now this is not necessarily stippling. These smaller dots are basically there just to help to communicate the texture. So we're going to be developing the value in the straw and using cross hatching, but of course the small dots, as you can see here, we're continuing this process on the body itself, are going to influence the texture or influence the value to a certain degree. So we'll need to keep that in mind as we continue working through this drawing. But uh, I, I want to be clear that we're not using stippling stippling here. This isn't the process of stippling per se, because the process of stippling is really designed to develop the value and of course the texture as well. But these small dots here are, are added just to mimic the texture that we see or the pattern that we see on the body of the crab itself. So you can see over the top, even in this spotted area or this area where we've added dots, we're using cross hatching to develop the shadow. And we can see there's a strong shadow here just on the left side of the body, which is produced by that large claw that extends out. And speaking of the claw, we'll move our way over to the left side of the pitcher plane, working on our first claw here. And of course, you can see I've added a few spots, a few dots here and there, and then develop the value with a bit of hatching. Now, of course, we can enhance the line quality as we work through this piece, mainly on the sides of the, or the segments of the crab that are on the shadowed side, which is on the right side, since we have a very strong light source originating from the left side in this image. So as we work through each segment, each portion of the drawing, we'll thicken up the line a little bit on the opposite side from the light source. This, of course, helps to create a little bit more of that illusion of form, and it also helps to strengthen the illusion of a shadow. Now the claw here is in strong light, mainly on the left side, but on the right side of this claw, we see some darker values and tones here. So of course, we'll use a bit of hatching here to create that shadow. And then of course, enhance the line quality by making the line a little bit thicker. Now we'll continue working our way over to the legs here. And again, this is going to be a repetitive process throughout this drawing since all of these legs are going to be addressed in a similar way. We're going to start with the spots, the little dots, where we see them concentrated. Of course, we're going to concentrate the dots. And in other words, where we see that, that pattern being heavily concentrated in the photo reference. We'll mimic this in the drawing and then over the top to develop the shadow and make the values a little bit dark, darker, we'll use a bit of hatching and cross hatching. Now you'll notice here again our lines that we're adding for the hatching are flowing over the form of each one of these segments. So there might be a slight curve associated with them and of course they're going to change direction as we work our way down the leg. Now this crab of course has a little bit of hair coming out from some of the legs. So of course we'll pull out a few strokes for those little hairs that uh, somehow are making their way out of that hard shell. And then we'll continue the process again, starting with our little dotted pattern here again to develop the texture and the pattern that we see on the body of the crab. And then over the top, we'll add quite a bit of hatching and cross hatching to develop the tone or value.
We can see on some of these legs, some of these segments, we have some larger spots. So a bit of hatching initially just to designate where they're located and then a bit of cross hatching over the top. And then of course we can make these spots a little bit darker with additional cross hatching if necessary. You can see here down here on the lower portion of this particular leg, we do have a larger spot and some smaller spots as well. And again, we're just going to continue this process. So once we've developed our first few legs, we kind of get accustomed to this process and it becomes a little bit more comfortable. Again, creating that spotted pattern and then developing the values with hatching and cross hatching. You can see here we're using quite a bit of cross hatching to make one of those spots here, one of those larger spots, quite a bit darker. And to address the overall value of this particular leg, which is somewhat of a darker gray, we'll use a bit of hatching. Continuing on now on our fourth leg, again, we're going to start with a bit of uh, some dots. I'm hesitating to call this stippling, of course, because it's not te technically stippling as we discussed before. And then hatching and cross hatching over the top. And you can see how these lines change direction according to the form here. Again, these lines not only develop the shadow and the tone and value, but also the illusion of form. Then we'll move our way to the middle portion of the drawing, the middle part of the body. And again, we're going to continue with this process of hatching and then adding these little small spots here and there. And then, of course, wherever we see the darker values right in the center, we'll use quite a bit of cross hatching here to make the values darker. And we also see an area of strong shadow on the upper right hand corner of the body. So some densely applied cross hatching here to make that value nice and dark. You'll notice we're not using solid applications in these areas where we see the strongest shadows. We're still sticking with cross hatching here, allowing just a few specks of the paper to show through. And over here on the right half of the body, we see uh, uh, a lot of those little small spots. So uh, we'll take our time here and make those little small so spots. And in areas using little small circles works as well. And then over the top, a bit of hatching. Now as we work our way down to the lower part of the body, we can see there is quite a bit of variety down here. We see um, I have some areas where the light is shining through and some areas where we see some stronger shadow. So we'll pay close attention to this as we develop the hatching and cross hatching down here or develop the shadowed areas. Now right on the underbelly, you'll see that these lines are quite diagonal. In fact, they become almost horizontal down at the bottom. Again, this is just to mimic or reflect the curvature of the body as it goes backwards in space. And of course, not only is this creating a darker value and creating the illusion of shadow here, but again, it's also helping us to understand the form of the crab. Now working our way over to the claw and the legs on the right side of the body. Again, this process is just going to continue. By now we've got it down. We're going to start with a few little dots here and there to develop the, the pattern that we see and some of the texture. And then over the top, just a bit of hatching and cross hatching. And for this particular claw here, we can see that the values get rather dark over here on the right side because the light source is so strong. We do have a very strong light source here. We, we understand strong light sources because we have high contrast between values. We have really strong highlights right next to really strong shadows and we can see this clearly in this image. And of course we'll think it up the line on the right side of this particular claw. Of course this helps to create the illusion of shadow but it also helps to make this claw appear like it's coming towards the viewer to a certain degree. And then we've got that leg back there near the rear of the body and the shadow here is really strong because we're working on the side of the crab that is mostly in shadow. So we'll concentrate the hatching marks here, again changing the direction of the stroke according to the form of each one of these segments. And then of course thickening up the line here on the, the right edge to make that shadow feel a little bit stronger. Now, of course, we won't forget the little small hairs and things that, again, are somehow making their way out of this hard shell or this hard body. And then working closer to the viewer now, again, starting with some of those spots and some of that pattern that we see here. And then just a bit of hatching, again, flowing over the form of each one of the segments. 
Now I'm trying to use mostly just hatching here for the legs and the claw. Again, just to try to stay consistent with what we did on the other side of the body. Now we're working down on this particular leg and we see there's quite a bit of cast shadow. I believe this is cast by the claw. It could be cast by one of the legs that's a little bit closer. So again, we're just going to concentrate the hatching here in this location to create that illusion of shadow. Again, paying close attention to the shape of the shadow and uh, that particular shape and where it, where it's located on this leg, and where it ends at the bottom. We can see that there's a bit of highlight right there at the bottom. So we want to be careful that we include that highlight down at the bottom of that leg. Then moving on to one of our last remaining legs here, and you can see there's a little bit of a segment uh, or a little bit of a change of direction down there at the bottom. So I'm just going to um, indicate that with a line before adding a bit of hatching down here at the bottom where the bottom portion of the leg goes backwards in space. And of course, there's a little bit of core shadow in this location. So some concentrated hatching here will create that illusion of shadow. Then we'll add a little bit of a darker tone here in the segment and of course thicken up the line quality or thicken up the line on the bottom portion here to make that shadow feel a little bit more convincing and add a little bit of weight to this particular section. Then of course it's back to adding our little spots here and there working down to the lower portion of this leg. Now there is just a slight bit of shadow here on the top so we'll use some hatching with quite a bit of space left open here just to make the value slightly darker before returning back to the lower portion of the leg adding a few more spots here and there. Then of course on the shadowed side we'll use a bit more hatching here to make that shadow a little bit more convincing. And then our last leg is in strong shadow. So we're going to concentrate quite a bit of hatching marks here as we work our way down the leg. Of course, flowing over the form of the leg itself, each one of those segments. We'll thicken up the line right here on the back edge, again making that shadow feel a little bit stronger and adding a little bit more weight to this particular leg. And then a bit of hatching at the bottom to indicate that shadow, leaving that open space at the very bottom of the tip for a highlight. Then of course we won't neglect the little hairs which add so much to the drawing. So we'll pull out a few quick strokes here and there for these little small interesting hairs. Now of course we want our crab to appear like it's on a surface so we're going to drop a little shadow underneath there. First I'm going to plan out the shadow with the H graphite pencil. And then we'll start creating the shadow using both vertical and horizontal stroking. Now these strokes are are fairly loose here to help to create uh, somewhat of an impression of a sandy surface here. And you'll notice these shadows are cast to the right since our light source is originating from the left. And then once our ink has dried completely we can take that kneaded eraser and erase away all of the remaining graphite lines. And now our drawing of a crab using cross hatching is complete. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there. Remember, if you want to learn more about how you can access this course, there's a link in the description below. If you want to check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free, I'll also leave a link for that in the description below this video as well. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel here on YouTube, I would encourage you to do so. We cover a broad variety of different drawing and painting media as well as subjects. As always, I want to thank you again for watching this video and I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.